Now, a lot of you might hate the idea of setting goals for your business and say things like, goal setting doesn't work, Sophie. Now, I have to say that I have the opposite experience. I love using goals as a tool for my art business. Now, in this short video, I'm gonna to explain to you why you likely have that experience and maybe even that negative feeling around goal setting. And I wanna to say to you something that you're probably not gonna like very much, but the reason that you think the goal setting is not working is probably because you haven't achieved any goals yet. So in this short video, I'm going to explain what's missing and the likely reasons why you haven't achieved those goals yet. And of course, what to do about it so that you can feel about goal setting the way I do to see it as a powerful tool for your business. Well, hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie and I love to help artists just like you to set up, market and grow a highly successful business doing what you love. Now, if you'd like to learn more tips and tricks on exactly how to grow your successful business, then you're in the right place because that's exactly what I talk about on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Now, before we get into the specifics of how to set successful goals, I want to ask you a question. What type of goals have you set before? Please use the comments below and just play along with me here. What sort of goals have you set in the past? What are goals that you have achieved? What are goals that you haven't achieved? Please let me know what different types of goals that you have set. See, the way I look at it, there are a few different types of goals. There are life goals. There's the key business goal that you're going to set each year for your business and there are smaller business goals. So obviously we're not talking about life goals in this video because we're all talking about all things business, right? But life goals, for example, it's quite typical in January to set yourself a health or a weight or a relationship, some sort of more general life goal. Now again, you can use the tips in this video to do something similar to make sure that you achieve those life goals as well but directly we're really looking at business. So let's look at the second two types of goals. So the second one is the key business turnover goal. Now this is the goal that's going to be a primary component in your artist business plan. Now you know that is the core topic I talk about. In the end, everything on this channel somehow somehow even very vaguely seems to come back to that why because it's going to underpin your success right having a business plan as i talk about a lot underpins everything you do and part of that plan is having an annual turnover so when i think about having a key goal for this year for my business i'm thinking about that turnover goal so we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. The third type of goal, again, would fit into your business plan, into your business, would be a smaller goal that you would need to achieve on your way to the bigger goal. So we're looking here at strategy. And I think one of the other reasons that people don't achieve their goals or they find the whole thing a bit demotivating is you pluck a goal out of the air. What would you like? You're thinking at the beginning of the year, what would I like to achieve? Oh, I'd like this thing over here. I'd like that thing over here. But actually, it's not really something that you're actively working on. It's not what you've decided to do for yourself for this year. It doesn't fit into a plan of any sort. It's a random thing you'd like to achieve. That doesn't make it a goal. That makes it an item for your wish list, by the way. So pop it on your wish list, and at some point, you might want to turn it into a goal. Okay, so let's look at six tips now to make sure that the goals that you do set really are achievable and are the right goals for you. So tip number one, get clear on what type of goal you're setting. If you're sitting down with a pen and paper, which I suggest you do to write your goals, you're thinking, okay, is this a life goal that I want to be setting? All right, great. Is this the key business goal for the year that I want to be setting? Fantastic. Or is this a secondary goal that is part of and is going to lead up to the primary business goal. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, oh, for those people that hate a SMART goal, I'm sorry folks, you can use any acronym you like in the goal setting world. The reason why people make these different kind of formulas for goal setting is because it needs to jump through a specific number of hoops in order for it to be a good quality goal. So we just use the SMART example because it's pretty familiar to most people. So of course you want it to be specific. If it's vague, not even you are going to know what it's about, let alone anyone else, right? 
So it needs to be specific. What is it you actually want to achieve? Which is why when I'm gonna use the example in a minute of a turnover goal, being specific is gonna be actually about taking a specific amount of money. This is the amount of money I want to turn over this year. Measurable, well, if it's something like a specific amount of money, that's easy to measure, right? How far along am I? Am I 50% of the way there? Great, okay, what do I need to do to make the rest of it? Achievable. Now you might say whatever goal that you write there, you might say, okay, it's my second year of business, I wanna make $2 million. Is that achievable? Well, physically, practically, it's achievable. Is it achievable for you? Are you likely to be able to do the type of strategies and plans and actions that it's gonna to take to achieve $2 million? Let's look at what you made in the first year. If you only made 50,000, you now wanna make 2 million. Is that really achievable for you? Is that likely, is it possible? Are you really gonna be able to make that happen? Now, part of that's gonna be a belief and the other part of it, of course, is a practical realization. Only you are gonna know the answer to that. I'm gonna suggest that you know, if, if your first year turnover was 50, you either might want to double that or you might want to take it up by 10 or 20%. So when we say achievable, we need to know the things that you're going to do are practical, like you can do them, you know how to do them. You've got a strategy. We're going to talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute. Relevant. Is it relevant? So is it completely out there? Is it something that's like, Oh, over here, it's nothing to do with your business at all. You set a goal that's not a monetary turnover goal, that's a turnover of, of a specific product. But actually, it's not a product that you're really even marketing at the moment, or you've got a brand new idea and it's a shiny object syndrome and it's over there somewhere. So make sure that the goal that you're gonna set is relevant to you and relevant to your art business. And of course, it needs to have a date on it. It needs to be time related, time bound. If you don't put a date on it, then you're never gonna achieve it. It's always gonna stay out in the future, right? I'm gonna do this thing, great, by when? By next month, by this year, by next year, by 10 years, all right? You've always got the ongoing excuse of never having to have to achieve it or do the work to achieve it because there's no date on the end of it. So having a date of when you intend to do it not only gives you some accountability, but it means it gives you an endpoint from which you're going to work backwards in your plan. So for example, your key art business turnover goal might go something like this. By December 2023, I have sold over, I always like to put that, over $60,000 pounds, euros worth of original paintings. All right, we know by when, it's very specific. Is it measurable? Yes. Is it relevant? Chances are if you're building an art business, selling paintings is relevant. Um, and is it achievable? Only you are gonna know that, but yeah, it's pretty achievable, right? Tip number three, the next thing you're gonna do is make sure that your artist's business plan backs that up, right? This is not, again, a random goal plucked out of the air, but when you work your way through the plan, everything that you're going to do is gonna lead up to that goal of selling 60,000, uh, I'm just gonna say dollars, for example, dollars worth of paintings. Number four, this must light you up. This goal must light you up and must be part of your big vision. That big vision of where you're going in the future with your art business, right? Now, if you haven't thought about that or you're not quite clear on that, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a really easy link to watch a video, another video on how you can really create that big vision for yourself and how you can get clear on what that vision might be that having that goal that takes you towards the big vision, it means that everything is aligned and that's exactly how you want it to be, right? So here's a, here's a real life example. You sell original art for an average of two and a half thousand dollars, meaning that you need to sell 24 original pieces over the year, right? That's a simple equation. Your plan is to have four solo shows, one a quarter, and your target obviously is six sales or a minimum of six sales at each show. Will it matter if the first show you don't sell anything? No, you still have three more shows. It just means that your target number will now have to go up for the other three, all right? So ideally you're gonna sell six at each of these. That's not to say that you can't be having other um, avenues of income, but let's just give this for an example. This is your plan of how you're gonna do it. You have allowed two months before each show to do solid marketing and or you have 
a mailing list of already interested people and existing customers. Because at the end of the day, if you have the strategy plans and for example, things like a mailing list to back up what it is you're gonna be doing, do you see how that all makes sense, right? That's very different from saying, I'm gonna sell this amount of art and then wandering off and then when December comes going, oh, I didn't achieve that. Of course you didn't achieve that. You need a plan, right? And this is one of the reasons that we build business plan so that you can work up and achieve that goal. Isn't that exciting? I hope you're excited. I hope at this point you're pausing the video, you're getting your pen and paper and they're actually starting to work on your plan for this year. Number four, this must light you up. This goal must light you up and must be part of your big vision. That big vision of where you're going in the future with your art business. Right now, if you haven't thought about that or you're not quite clear on that, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a really easy link to watch a video, another video on how you can really create that big vision for yourself and how you can get clear on what that vision might be. But having that goal that takes you towards the big vision, it means that everything is aligned and that's exactly how you want it to be, right? Tip number five, Anchor this all in with a vision board. This is the perfect time of year, at the time of year that I'm shooting this is January. This is the moment to create that vision board. And again, it's not a random vision board full of things you'd like during the year. You've got a vision board that's very specific. You want to make sure that you find images that are of sales, of money, of people buying, paintings, of venue. All the things that are gonna be involved with you building up to those four solo shows in this example, all right? So you want to make sure that you support yourself in as many different avenues as you possibly can. Kind of the practical planning stuff and also what I call the more mindset and kind of law of attraction sort of stuff as well. Because you know on this channel, I do like a mixture of both things. And last for now, tip number six, and I have so many more because I really do love goal setting. I've been using it effectively for years, by the way, so it works if you work it, like all good things in life. Tip number six is about, again, deepening that your experience. So using something like meditation or and or visualization exercises. You can sit every morning and do a visualization where you visualize that goal coming into fruition. So you close your eyes and you picture that future self actually at the exhibition, you know, shaking hands with a customer, putting a red dot on the wall, another red dot, make sure you see a minimum of six red dots when you visualize this, all right? Paintings coming down, being wrapped, being handed over at the end of the show. You do this all the time and this is just going to become your reality, right? It's just going to happen for you. Remember that behind every successful business is 80% is your mindset. 80% belief, 20% strategies. You need both to have a successful business. But why not just make it easier for yourself? Do the mindset work as well as the practical stuff. All right, I hope you've loved these six tips. And now, as I promised a moment ago, on screen is a link to the next video that I think would be really helpful if you're not clear on that big vision. This is about getting clear on your vision because at the end of the day, everything is about that as well. We're building a business around a big vision that you have, all right? So one of the reasons that you're in business is because you have a vision. It's somewhere that you want to go, something you want to achieve, a legacy you want to leave behind, whatever it is for you. Your future vision is really important. And if you haven't really carved that out exactly, then don't forget to check out this video next so you can get that piece done as well. All right, if you haven't already, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And of course, subscribe to my channel because every week I put out new, fresh content with more helpful tips and tricks to help you get successful and build your profitable art business. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.